Okay, so here's a general update. Um, I have released fledglings out here. There are seven of them. That is Gray's oldest baby, Gray and Cloudy's, that was fostered out. And his foster brother over there. That's Izon and Matilda's baby. Um, let's see. There are two out of three of Sky and Dexter's babies, and number three is right up there. And let's see. Uh, oh, and there is um, Haverty and Lacey's baby and their foster. It looks just like his mother, except that I think he's a boy. They were just learning how to fly. So they kind of fly around. There you go. He got it that time. Where'd he go? There he is. Um, so they're doing great. I just put them out here yesterday and they just jumped right in. Um, no problem. Uh, there's so many of them that the birds that were already in here are like, oh my god, we've been invaded. And there hasn't been much in the way of bickering. Um, I've been looking at some of my girls out here. See this uh, gray wing girl right there? Not the one on the very end who's a year and a half old. But the, the gray wing girl right there. She is showing, she's only three months old. She's showing some beautiful size. That's Stratus and um, Hyacinth baby girl. She's showing some beautiful size and a nice shape. Which is kind of interesting because neither of her parents had nice shape. Um, uh, but Stratus is tall, um, even though he's, he's narrow, so she got daddy's height, I think, but, uh, if she keeps going the way she is, this could be a very nice bird for showing. And this little guy, I'm just waiting with bated breath to find out whether or not he's a boy. Fingers crossed. No way to tell yet. Okay. So that's uh, fledglings that are fledged. Um, let's back out of here. So over on the male side, we are nine days out from um, the show. So I got my four little show cages right there. You put them in a cage like that um, for when they're being shown. And in order to reduce stress during the show, I put one in here, and it has a bunch of millet and stuff in it, in the bottom of it, so that they can climb in and out of it and play in it, and kind of um, discover what they want to do, uh, so that when I put them in that for a show, they won't be stressed out. Um, I'm still kind of round and round on who I'm going to take. I think I've pretty much decided to take this little guy down here which is Bubba's um, dark green baby because his molt seems to be pretty much over um, and this little guy right here which is I just call him Boo Bird um, they're both January babies so they're only five months old but they're both lovely for young birds so um, that's a good thing and then of course I'll take Haverty and um, my question is, am I going to take Peabody? Oh, come on. Clarify, camera. There you go. Am I going to take Peabody? Because you, if you look at his wings, he has, still has nice markings on his wings for the spangle. Or his uncle, um, Aquinas, who's in the bigger cage, who's more mature, so has slightly better feather, but his markings aren't as good. So we'll see what happens with that. Um, and then of course I'm taking Haverty too. And they are over here in the grown-up cage. So of course I had to put um, a show box in here as well. I haven't seen anybody in this show box yet. They're avoiding it. Um, whereas in the other cage they're, they are definitely going into it. So, But everybody's looking good in here. I'm kind of coming in here every once in a while I'm looking for pairs that look like they might be moving in a breeding type direction and in the last week I've seen them go from ignoring each other completely to they're starting to pair off again. Um, when <clears throat> the bonded pairs when they're really not in breeding season you can't walk in here and tell who's bonded to who. Um, but when they are back into breeding season 
you start coming in and seeing them when they're ready to go back to breeding again, you start coming in and seeing the ones that are ready to breed sitting together. So um, there is Verde and Kelly. Kelly's got a crush on Verde and she's never going to let him go. Um, Izod and Matilda are back together again, but it's too soon for them. They have to wait for at least a month. Um, who else? I've seen Sparky and Lilith together. They're not right now, but they're, they're Sparky. I don't even see Lilith. Where is she? Oh, no, that's not her either. What is Lilith? I have so many birds in here, I can't find them anymore. Um, I've also seen, um, that is Remington, and that is her, um, Razzle, right below her. Um, Rainbow is playing, is playing the field right now. She loves her little buster down here, but she'd prefer to get a hold of Bubba if she could. Bubba's the dominant male in here, this guy. And all the girls would love Bubba. Um, so she's at really acting like she's ready, getting ready to start breeding again, but she is in, in the middle of a molt. That's why she has only one tail feather sticking out down there and pins all over her head. So I have to wait for the molt to go away before I can um, breed her. But she is definitely one of the next ones coming up. Um, Haverty uh, has been play paying attention to this girl. But again, they have a few weeks to go before it's going to be time to try them again. Um, so they're starting to wake up, I think is what I'm seeing. But really, where is... That's not... Lilith? Where's Lilith? I don't see her. Oh, there she is, right there. <laughs> There's Lilith. So I've seen Sparky and Lilith hanging together, and they are definitely going to go back in again for another try when they're more convincingly ready to go. So it's still pretty loose. I don't see, there's not actually any chasing around. Nobody's trying to, except for these two, who just came off a breeding session. So they're, they're thinking on, they're on reset mode, but she needs to get more calcium into her system and they both need to rest. So um, that's not happening. Um, I'm hoping for Bubba and Gidget to start making some, um, start sparking so I can put them back in again, but they just aren't. Um, I, the one pair that I have that was clearly ready and ready to go was Limey and Luscious, um, complete with Luscious's, um, sear is completely brown and Limey's trying to breed her. So I said, you know what, if they're ready now, they're ready. So I stuck them in the, uh, back into the big cage and instantly... She's chomping on, uh, there's my turtles sitting on their dock. Um, she's chomping on the cuddle bone and going in and out of the box. It was instantaneous, so I think they really are ready. Um, so they are back in. So I kind of get the feeling that I'm going to get a kind of a trickle. Whereas in the springtime, it was fill every nest box you pop every um, breeding cage you possibly could. Right now, I think I'm going to get more of a trickle. So there's those two. See her? She loves her nest. Oh, look. There's Coco and Kobe, and there's their two little babies. I know that those other two eggs are infertile, um, but I'm going to leave them for a few days because somebody somewhere along the line said it helps keep the hen from sitting too hard on the babies. So, so we'll leave that. Um... Here is our babies. This one's been taking baths all day. Like he's soaking wet. Um, he's, and uh, these are the two oldest babies from Laurel and Stratus. Hi, little one. And they keep taking baths. They're eating on their own. I put Laurel back in the big flight yesterday. They are two different colors. And I can't tell. This one, see how... The striping is much lighter on that one. I think he might be a cinnamon, but I'm really not sure. If so, then it's probably a girl. Um, so they're on their own now for a few days. Tomorrow I'm going to bring out um, my little clear body hen and cookie and little um, gizmo. And I'm going to bring out 
Stratus and the three younger chicks and put them in a separate cage so that they'll be nearby. Um, so these two are, you know, post-mommy kind of missing her, I think. Um, but they're eating all right, so I think they're okay. And I know that we're down to, we have just the three babies in here because I banded baby number one today, this morning. And it's still on him. Yep. So, three nice babies. Um, I'm starting to look like maybe the last three eggs aren't going to hatch. Which would be okay with me, since I talked to... Um, look at these two. They're just in such beautiful condition right now. Lovely feather. I trimmed them. They're vents this morning. Limey is not a very big bird, but he's sure feathering out very nicely. The older he gets, the better he looks. Um, but anyway, I was talking to a couple of the other um, members of the Northern California Budgie Association Club, and both of them had also been talking about clutch size and what's optimal and what isn't. And I was, I had gone from, well, you know, they can do five. Um, I backed off that and said, no, they can't. Probably four. And they said three. If you want the babies to, to get well fed and reach their optimal sizes, they can only bring up three chicks. Um, so, interesting, the more you find out. Um, <clears throat> it kind of makes a lot of sense. And as a budgie breeder, you don't want, I don't want to end up with 7,000 birds. Um, I have the big flight cage, the divided flight for the boys and the girls, and 12 breeder cages in this breeding shed. And I would like that to be enough. So I'm l always looking at birds that I'm, okay, I'm going to breed them and then I'll sell them as a pair. Um, and sell them off because, you know, i got to work with the next generation. So um, I do have, uh, like for instance, Scruffy and Laurel have been bred. Um, I may keep Laurel because she's split to um, recessive pied and with that great big size that she has it'd be nice to breed her to another recessive pied um, but I have no need for um, Scruffy anymore I have five chicks from him although um, you know the, the younger ones are going to be are not as big as they would have been um, I thought and Matilda need to get bred again but after this um, uh, clutch here, Stratus, well, I, I won't have any need for Stratus. Um, and then there are certain pairs that I kind of intend to keep, like Kobe and Coco. Um, I have a feeling they're going to be producing some very top quality chicks, so I wouldn't hang on to them. Whereas, like, Stratus, Stratus is the scrawniest bird, um, but I needed his, um, what do you call it? I needed his his mutation, which is dilute. But I don't need it anymore. I have two chicks by him and Hyacinth, and I have three in here by him and Marine. So I'm thinking uh, I'll probably pass him on as well. But probably not Marine because she's a high value hen. So I don't know. We'll see. Um, so yeah, it's kind of the idea that I only need um, two to three chicks for the most successful outcomes and clutches also reduces um, my population quite a little bit. Um, and if I'm getting the best case scenario for each chick, then I can tell this one actually is bigger than that one rather than this one was born first so it got more food so it's bigger and that one might have genes to be big too. So it's, it's um, something to think about. And um, they were talking about um, limiting the number of eggs um, she's one of the gals said she uses a grease pencil and numbers the eggs as the hen lays them and once the hen stops laying she's gonna just take out the last egg or two or three if she ends up laying six or seven eggs she'll take out three of the eggs and leave her with only four um, I mean after you candle them of course to make sure that you know um, or foster out eggs, or she, they were both talking about um, doing the whole let's get some regular parakeets and breed them at the same time 
and um, trade out all their eggs for um, uh, English budgie eggs. Um, but I kind of, I'm like, you know, if I'm trying not to have too many birds, then I don't want a whole nother subset of parakeets that are eating up, pa taking up space where I could have English budgies. So that kind of doesn't make any sense to me, you know? I mean, I, I have Neon and Angel because they were some of my first parakeets and they're like four and five years old now and they'll stay with me forever. But I don't, I don't want to have a whole nother cage with regular parakeets in it. If I'm going to have a whole nother cage, I'd want to have English budgies in it. So I don't know. I, I'm not sold on that whole idea. But I could see limiting clutch size. Um, by a combination of candling and numbering eggs, so, you know, you can tell by the, by the time the third egg is laid whether or not the first one is fertile, and often they aren't. So, if I can number them and candle them, then I can make sure that I leave a hen with, say, four fertile eggs, um, and no more than that, and, um, hoping that she would hatch three of them, um, and if she ends up hatching a fourth, fostering it out to somebody that only has two chicks. So, um, we got our two babies here. I know those other two are infertile. And I begin to think that um, the three eggs in here, I know two of them were the first two eggs she laid, and they would be infertile, but there should be a fourth egg in there that's viable. Um, but it should have hatched. The last chick hatched on the 21st, and it's the 25th now. So I'll give it a few more days and then candle them again and see, but I suspect we're only going to get three chicks out of here, which is a good thing, um, because they will be um, chicks with good size and in good health um, and good show prospects. So yeah, this whole limiting numbers here is an appealing idea to me on a whole bunch of different levels. So, so this is a hen that generally lays only three or four eggs. We like that about her. Ha <laughs>